Even if you haven't used Blender before, in this video, I will show you how you can make your first jaw dropping Blender rendering animation with absolutely zero 3D modeling skill required. I know this render is not even close to beautiful, but this video is super objective oriented as I won't be really touching anything about lighting, camera movements, and other stuff. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Jack. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a 3D scanning startup called Kiri Innovation. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to follow along with my epic journey. Blender is a very powerful tool for 3D creations. For example, you can do 3D modeling in Blender, create animations, make professional movie after effects, and many more. Well, despite all these powerful and professional features of the Blender, uh, the real reason why we all love Blender is because it's free and completely open source. You can download Blender in one of the two ways. Um, the first way is very straightforward. Just go to their official website and just download it from there. They have a super clear website, so you won't really get lost along the downloading. Um, but actually, the second way is a bit strange, but it's my favorite way. Download it on Steam. Well, it provides the exactly same version as you would download on a website. But, I mean, it's pretty cool to show your other Steam friends that you're working on Blender, isn't it? Plus, you can always keep the Blender up to date with the auto-update feature on Steam, just like other games. Open your Blender and create a new general file. Okay, not gonna lie, you will be overwhelmed when you first open the Blender. But don't worry, you're not the only one. Even the pro Blender users don't know many of the features there. It's all about knowing just enough to finish the objective after objective and to gradually build up the understanding along the way. There's really no shortcut around it. All right, although you don't need to know everything about this overwhelming interface, we still need to get ourselves familiarized with the area that we need for this project, which is number one, the real port. This is your main working area. You can view your 3D models and rotate the viewport. So rotate the viewport, hold on to your mouse middle button, and rotate with your mouse. And you can also shift the viewport by using the little hand icon on the right side. Hold on to the hand icon, and with the mouse left click button, you just drag it, just like this. By default, there are three objects created in a new Blender project. The 3D model of a cube, a camera, and the light source. In our first Blender project, don't worry about the cube or the light, because once we open the demo template, they'll be set up for you automatically. But I want you to know just a tiny bit more about the camera, because what you see right now in the viewport is not the same as the final render. To see what the position looks like in the final render, click on the camera icon on the right side of your viewport, and here, you are in the camera view. Now you're seeing everything through the camera, and this will represent what you will actually see in the final render. Note that in the camera view, if you try to rotate the scene with your mouse middle button, you will actually quit the camera mode and go back to the normal viewport. But what if I only want to change the views through the camera? And here's the trick number one for you. Make sure you're back in the camera view and there's a little left pointing arrow on the top right of the viewport. Click on that and then go to the view tab, check mark camera to view box. And now you can change whatever view you like directly through the camera view. And if you don't want your camera view to change, click on the camera icon again and go back to the normal viewport and rotate whatever you like. The camera view will not change. The toolbar. In the toolbar, you can do simple good things with the 3D model. Make sure the 3D model is selected, and then you can move the 3D model with the move button. Or rotate it. Or scale it. Number three, render engines. 
If you're new to the 3D world, you might be unfamiliar with the word render. Um, in one sentence, rendering means the computer tries to simulate the lighting of the scene to make the scene look as real as possible. Um, different rendering engines have different ways to render the lights. Some render engines may be faster than the others, but they won't look as real, uh, while the other render engines may have super realistic rendering effect, but it may take hours or even days. Blender has two different render engines, one for the faster but less realistic rendering needs and one for slower but more realistic needs. To choose between the two engines, use the properties area on the right and find the render properties tab. Here, you can choose between render engines. EV is the faster but less realistic one and Cycles is the powerful but slower one. For our project, because we want to make a stunning render, let's use Cycles. To see the actual effects of those render engines, we need to switch to different preview option. Right now, we are at solid preview mode. This will ensure the smoothest working environment with no rendering effects. But if we switch it to the render preview mode, you will see the difference. This is the Cycles engine. You can see how it's trying to render the lights on each single particle. <laughs> That's incredible. And now let's switch to the EV engine. It's probably not a noticeable with just a cube, but it's actually very different. You will see once we open our demo template. Great, now we got everything we need for a project. Let's open the template and get some real taste. This video is purely for you to get started with Blender. You don't need to 3D model anything for this project. I've already embedded the download link of the already made Blender template in the video description area. So just download the template and follow along. Just like other software, go to File, Open, and open the template. And boom, this is what it really tastes like. Well, you can rotate the viewport to take a better look at this amazing template. And want to see what's even cooler? Click on the play button in the bottom. Look at this. See how the 3D models interfere with the grass environment? This is amazing. As for this entire middle next level stuff, don't worry about it at all for our project. We won't touch any of that. Remember I said you don't need to 3D model anything for this project? Well, now we have the scene properly imported, but where do we get the actual 3D model if we don't 3D model? And now it's time to introduce the Kiri Engine app. It's an app for both iOS and Android phones that allows you to take a whole bunch of photos around a physical object. And thanks to our cloud computing, you will get detailed 3D models within five minutes, just like this one. But keep in mind, guys, recently I've gotten some comments here and there saying, hey, Curie Engine sucks. It can't even 3D model my water bottle whatsoever. Um, unfortunately, it's not because the Curie Engine sucks. It's because to master the photogrammetry technology that Curie Engine is using, you need to understand which objects and scanning methods are suitable for your situation. Although we are delivering better and better in-app tutorial, there are plenty of very in-depth and educational tutorials out there on YouTube uh, demonstrating how to use Kiri Engine like a pro. I've embedded some of the links down in the description area. Make sure to check them out if this is your first time using Kiri Engine. They will definitely help you to get better results. All right, let's assume you've already done some really good 3D scanning with the Kiri Engine app. Now let's try to download this 3D model to our project. So in the app, just click on the export button and type in the email address and want to receive the model. And that was fast. Click on the download link from the email and you'll just start downloading the model. Once the model is downloaded to computer, feel free to check it out. If you use OBJ formats, you should see a total of six files in the folder. There are actually two sets of 3D models for you. Um, one for the original generated 3D model with thousands of hundreds of polycounts to represent the geometrical details of the object, and one for the low poly 3D model with only 15,000 polycounts, ideal for game developments. Okay, 
Now go back to Blender and use file import obj to import your 3D scan model to Blender. And of course, if you use other formats in Kiri Engine, you use the corresponding formats when importing to Blender. When first import Kiri 3D scan model to the Blender, you might notice two strange things. One, it's not set to the center, and two, it's not sized correctly for the scene. Um, don't worry, these can be changed very easily. To center the 3D model, left click on the 3D model to select it, and then right click, set origin, geometry to origin. And this will let the 3D model center to the origin of the viewport. And remember the toolbar we talked about earlier? Use the scale tool on the toolbar to scale the 3D model to the size you want, like this. And we can also move the 3D model to the place that makes more sense, um, like this. Okay, um, let's spend a little bit more time to refine the scene to the way we like. Pay attention, if you're new to Blender, check which shading options you are at. Because if you're at a solid preview mode like mine, you will not be able to see the texture. So let's switch to the actual render mode to see the 3D model in color. And let's change the render engine to cycles to see what it looks like. Great, we need to do one more step to make sure you don't spend a crazy amount of time rendering. We need to set up several parameters in the render properties. Under the render properties, make sure to choose cycles as the render engine, and then let's take a look at the device option. All right, if your computer has a GPU, always, always choose GPU compute as the render device. This will ensure a much faster rendering speed. But if a computer doesn't have a GPU, well, it's not the end of the world, but you can only use CPU as the render engine, and which will be slower. And the second parameter to take a look is the sampling section. Under sampling, find the render dropdown area and change max sampling to 128. What we are doing here is to tell the render engine how many times it should calculate stuff on each pixel. Higher the number, higher the rendering quality, but it will also take longer time to render. I find the sampling number of 128 is enough for casual rendering, but feel free to try out different numbers to see which works the best for you. Now, let's move to the output properties. First, go to the output properties. It's located right below the render properties. Make sure the frame rate is at 24 FPS, which is more than enough for our first project. In frame range, you can choose a different range of frame to render. By default, it starts from frame 1 to frame 250, but you can shorten it by choosing a smaller end frame number, for example, frame 100. Um, this means it only renders from frame 1 to frame 100. Um, I'll just render the entire duration to frame 250 for my project. In the output section, make sure to choose a location you want to save the render. Okay, I'll just save it to the desktop. Uh, one more thing that's worth to mention is the file format. If you just want to render a still image, we can use image format such as PNG. But if we want to render an animation, we would assume we should change it to a video format like AVI, right? Well, you can still use these video formats for saving the animation, but it's actually recommended to still use image formats for rendering both image and animation. Why? It's because if you're saving the animation as a single video format, if the Blender accidentally shut down during rendering, you will lose the entire file. But if you save the animation as the picture, uh, you're actually saving each frame individually. 
And so even if the Blender shut down during the rendering, uh, you can always start from the last frame saved. But the downside of it is that you will have to use another video editing uh, software afterwards to convert those individual pictures into a video. Since I need to make this project as easy to follow as possible, I'm going to take the chance and use the video format anyways. So I don't have to show you how to merge all the frames together in other software. So once we're done setting up these parameters, let's finally render it. On the top bar, find the render tab. Now you have two options. You can either render the scene as an animation or you can render the scene as an image. You don't have to spend hours rendering the animation. You can still get a sip of the render by just rendering a still image. It's totally up to you to try. But for me, I'll just render the entire animation. And three, two, one, go. Now, your computer is rendering the scene frame by frame. You can't close the window while rendering. Um, the rendering speed is completely up to how powerful your computer is. So if you find that rendering animation would cost too much of the time, feel free to close the window to stop rendering and start with rendering a still image. All right, after 30 minutes of render on my PC, here's the final animation. All right, I really hope you guys learned something from today's video. And hey, if you actually made your first render by following along this video, please share the video in our Discord channel because we're having a massive Discord giveaway until December 15th of 2022. You can just make the entry by sharing the video on our Discord channel. And if you miss the entry by the time you're watching this video, still join us because we have massive giveaway going on very regularly on our discord channel and that's about it for today's video i hope you like I, I, blah, blah, blah. 